You've been here two weeks? I've been here two weeks now, but I was also here um, three and a half weeks ago. I go back and forth. You know, my heart is kind of split into two. Uh, my kids are in Singapore with my husband and, uh, you know, what's going on here. We were, were talking in the car a little bit about how it must have been for you to be away and wondering whether that has been helpful for you to be with other people who are also missing family members. Has that been some sort of a comfort to you in any way? You're talking about community or just added pain? I mean, both are horrific. You know, I was the first to find out that something's really going on um, because my parents took their early morning walk like they do every day and it kind of like 6.50 I spoke to my mom and unlike any other time where there were rockets and they were like oh everything's fine this time they said there was so many rockets they had to lay down uh, face down on the fields and uh, you know hide from the rockets and I told my mom to tell me when she's home and meanwhile I spoke to my friends in the kibbutz um, they said that, um, you know, it's crazy and I noticed it's 720 and my mom never told me they're home. So I basically started calling them, panicking, nobody answers, calling my brothers, my sister, nobody's answering me. I get kind of stressed and then 730 I see my friends are telling me that the kibbutz is full of terrorists, that they're going door to door, burning children, you know, shooting us just like a horrific scene. Um, so being there, you know, even though if I was in Israel as well, there wasn't a lot I could do, but being there so far from it, I was feeling so helpless. Plus I have kids, I don't wanna drive them crazy and stress them out. And, you know, I, I'm always, I always have to think about like, you know, what's going on, I'm all stressed out and you know keeping the environment kind of safe for my kids um you know i didn't have answers to anything my eldest is very very smart um, as soon as she sees something wrong she asks all the questions so until i decided to come to israel after about two weeks you know many people told me not to come it's dangerous stay with your kids you have kids to think about um, but my heart was just split and even being here now with people who understand what I'm going through, it's a nightmare because I have all the time to deal with it. And the more I'm dealing with it, the more it hurts, the more the nightmare feels horrific and unfathomable. You know, every person I know has a horrible story. And just this week we had, um, you know, I think about four or five deaths just from our kibbutz. So, you know, the hostages that I love are getting released. I know most of them. And the um, hostages that I love are still hostages. And, you know, my mom, we don't know if she's alive or dead. I know she called um, the uh, kibbutz paramedic at, uh, I believe it was 704. She said that they were both shot by terrorists, that my dad is probably dead, and that she was shot as well. Uh, the paramedic tried to send her the ambulance. It was really early in the morning and um, he couldn't. The terrorists already were in the kibbutz. They burnt the tires, uh, sorry, shot the tires, burnt the ambulance. We have the recording of it. It's horrific, really. She speaks Hebrew, which is not her native language, obviously. She's Canadian um, and just like emphasizes how stressed she was. She describes very graphically what happened to my dad very graphically, he was basically murdered. And she was shot in her face, in her arm. Um, and that's the last thing we know of my mom, really. Last thing we know of her. We got uh, information that my dad's body was seen taken into Gaza. Uh, my mom is assumed to be on the same vehicle. No um, visual evidence, but uh, that's the assumption. And it's just a nightmare you know this uh, whole Hamas reality show they had with the with the lists which was I can't even describe the torture so every night even though you know again I know lots of the hostages released I love them my friends my my parents friends 
obviously, um, you know, I'm happy to see them, but every night my heart beats and like waits for the list. It's crazy. And then a day after, there's this whole show Hamas puts up about cars and let's wave to the camera. And it's just horrific. The whole scene is horrific. And while you're so happy to see your friends back, you know, the mothers of your friends back, it's like, where's my mom? You know, where's my mom? And the fact that she wasn't on any list gets me even more worried because what does that mean? Does that mean you, don't, you can't find her? What does that mean? Is she alive? Is she dead? None of the released hostages saw her, none of them. And um, it just, it, you know, your mind kind of fills the gap of what's going on and every hour the gap changes. Oh, maybe she's in a, you know, family home and they're taking good care of her, <laughs> right? Or maybe she's in the tunnels like everybody else and doesn't see daylight. It's, it's honestly, it's torture. Yeah. Have the Israeli authorities been able to give you any indication of what they think has happened to her? Of course, I'm in constant, constant uh, contact with everybody. I, uh, you don't really know me, but I don't wait for anything. Most of the information I got myself because, you know, it happened in Iroz. I know everybody there. Um, but I'm in very, very close contact with the Israeli government, the American government. Right now I'm trying to um, get some connection with the Canadian government. I really need them here. I need their help. You know, Canada has such a unique characteristic and unique um, approach, like a neutral approach, that I really need right now with Qatar, with Iran. I need the negotiation skill that Canadians have. She was such a peace activist and all she wanted is to help. You know, she was an English teacher for years and then she turned into a mindfulness teacher for children and teenagers. And back when she started, it wasn't really something that was accepted, but she demanded it because of the situation in the Gaza Strip and she wanted to help them so much. Do you think, I mean, when, you, when you're worrying about her, do you feel like that kind of, because I was reading a little bit about her and your, your interviews with, about her and things like that, that that sort of sense of being able to help others with their anxiety might be standing her in good stead now? I'm hoping. You know, all I can do is hope. Um, I'm hoping she's with people. I don't know. She might be alone. Um, I'm hoping she can use that for herself. You know, she just witnessed my dad, you know, getting murdered. They were so close. They did everything together. And I can just hope she's kind of, you know, listening to her inner mindfulness and using that. But, you know, I, I can't even imagine, like, during these horrific times, like, using mindfulness, you have to be so strong. She is, she's very strong, but I don't know what she's been through. But I can only hope, you know, when I stop to think about it, I'll just break down. I don't want to cry anymore. But like every morning I start my day by crying because it's silent and my thoughts are there. And we just, ha we have to get her out of there, you know? I don't know what she's going through, you know? She might be giving information that we're not looking for her that we don't think about her. I mean, it's hard to believe that somebody would think that because we love her so much. So many people love her. But you never know what happens when you're isolated. Have you had time to process the death of your father? Is that something you accept? It's something you need to wait? The death is not official because, you know, by um, Jewish uh, laws, you need a body, you need some kind of... Um, evidence, I guess, something more uh, physical to declare death, but the army does see him as a uh, hostage, um, a body that they took hostage. But, you know, I can't sit Shiva, I can't have a funeral. It's kind of like everything is, is open. I don't know where my mom is. I know what happened to my dad, but it's not official. So everything is just a huge question mark. You know, I, I, I am aware what happened to him and I break down and cry about him. He was my biggest, biggest inspiration in life. I mean, I love my mom, don't get me wrong, but my dad was so dominant in my life. Really, the thought, I don't want to cry. <laughs> you can
You know, the thought of him not seeing my kids grow up breaks my heart. And I'm hoping my mom will be there. <laughs>